Real estate hasn't had the opportunity to be this good since the last recession and the real estate crash. For what feels like forever now, but really like the last two years since COVID, interest rates were super low, so competition on the buyer side was really high, and supply was also constrained because there was a shortage of homes. So that high demand with the low supply pushed prices up and up and up, and affordability really took a hit. And inflation certainly played a key role in pushing prices up and it made building homes more expensive so from a macro level buying a good rental property was really tough but now we're seeing inflation beginning to get under control and interest rates have spiked to seven percent as of recording this in, in january and some of the most important facts are that the days on market the average time a house is listed for sale has gone up and the listing supply the number of homes on the market for sale has also gone up that's triggered a shift from a seller's market to that we saw the last two years to now a buyer's market which is good news for you and here on my channel i talk about all things real estate investing short-term rentals and building your business today we're going to talk about how you can dive in i've been investing in real estate and short-term rentals since 2019 and have flipped and bird and done short-term rentals large commercial multifamily, and boutique hotels i have about 150 units right now consisting of an apartment complex and five boutique hotels and several vacation rental houses and in this video i'm going to break down how you can get your start in real estate investing this year 2023 is going to be the year for you and i'll even share some tips on how you can get started even if you don't have that much money and the cool thing about real estate is uh, you often need less than you think so let's dive in first of all get your cash ready so start saving your money now and look for ways to make more money if you're not so you can transition jobs you can work hard to earn a bonus or show your employer that you deserve a raise real estate is a great way to earn passive income but oftentimes you have to get your personal finances right first so focus on what you can control and get your financial house in order so that you're ready to buy real estate when you find the right deal also on this you can open up a HELOC or a home equity line of credit on a home that you already have with equity in it to free up some cash you could also get a new credit card with a higher balance and zero percent intro APR that you can take a cash advance on but be very careful only use it if you can get it back like I don't talk about using credit cards often because most people just lack the discipline to use them correctly but if you're like primed up you know you're ready to go you're good with money and disciplined and have a solid strategy you know like if you're gonna flip or bird to get it back before that high interest rate starts piling up then go for it like I've used zero percent intro APR credit cards uh, to fund rehab projects it's all in how you use it just just know it's a strategy you can also find a partner who has similar goals to you and has the money or the credit to get the loan to buy the real estate and also just be creative it could be a combination of multiple of these things and real quick the tips to come are even better and more actionable i want to want to deliver the goods for you guys to help kickstart uh, you diving into real estate investing so help me out too and just drop an elbow on the like button and subscribe to my channel so you can get all the best real estate investing advice that i have to give because i'm gonna give it all to you guys all right so let's talk about the markets to invest in look for markets where the population is increasing but it hasn't blown up yet so that there's a wave you know that you can still ride up appreciation has this just uncanny ability to make your deal very forgiving especially when you're starting out because you're not going to know everything you know you're going to make mistakes but it's okay because that action of getting in is going to get you momentum and you'll be able to learn from doing so on the market piece it's really hard to get into a competitive market like LA or Miami and compete against tons of other buyers when you're starting out and markets like that have uh, have a price point for entry-level investment properties that's really really hard to pencil out like personally i would recommend that the best place to get started is your own backyard or the market that you live in like you have less risk that way because you can see the property in person you like they have a pretty good idea or an understanding of the market dynamics and you know the people there but let's say your market is just no good right it's not it's not that place you live in a small rural area or an area that has a declining population that you don't think is going to do well long term you can absolutely start investing from a distance and when going long distance and picking a market the top metrics that i look for are population growth job growth and wage growth so these metrics are going to tell you if people are coming to your area you know if they're if their jobs for them when they get there like because your tenants are going to need income to pay rent right and if the wages are growing that's going to be an indicator that rent will go up over time so more people more jobs higher wages means good demand for the real estate market overall and for the rental market 
that's gonna get you the appreciation and the rental growth, which are, for me, the two biggest contributors to good returns over time. You can find these metrics on the US Census Bureau's website. I've used that a ton for, uh, for market uh, research from population growth and data. And Texas A&M University tracks real estate data and has a ton of great things that you can look up, like um, wages and jobs and different things like that. And one of my favorites is U-Haul puts together a report every year about where people are moving to by tracking the one-way U-Haul rentals. And that one's really insightful. And all those links to those three sites are in the description below so you guys can use those to do your own research. Once you get your cash right and you pick a market, it's time to start analyzing properties. In the beginning, this is one of the most important things that you can start doing. So picking your market is important, obviously, but there are a hundred different markets that you can get profitable rentals in. You need to get really good at finding and analyzing the deal so you can get familiar with the numbers in your area so that when you find a good deal, you can recognize it and jump on it. So I'm not going to go into the analysis as a whole because it just would be a really long video and I'll do a separate one on that. But what I'll say is start analyzing deals ASAP. I would recommend probably analyzing 50 deals before you know you make your first offer just to get comfortable with your numbers. And things you need to know and get really comfortable with and know like the back of your hand is what the comps are uh, for your area, meaning what similar houses have sold for and also what the rental rates are for the different size of homes, uh, rentals that you're looking for, like a two bed, one bath versus a four bed, two bath are gonna have different rates and that'll vary based on your area. And also your estimated expenses, like your utilities, your taxes and so on, are all gonna vary based on your area. So get really familiar with that data so you can punch it into your spreadsheet and you know, start analyzing these deals. But you have to find deals to analyze them, right? Good point. So ways you can find deals can be as simple as going on to realtor.com or Zillow and searching for, uh, properties for sale in your area. With listing supply and time on market increasing, there's a lot of deals to be found on the MLS right now. And those, um, and those sites basically mirror the MLS or the multiple listing service where real estate agents list all the houses for sale. But it doesn't always get all of them. And sometimes agents will have, you know, off market deals or deals that aren't listed yet. So you need to make relationships with agents as well. And as a buyer, you don't have to just work with one agent. Normally as a seller, you do because you sign a listing agreement. But as a buyer, you can have multiple agents send you deals and work with the one that, you know, brings you the deal that you end up buying. Good agents have brought me multiple deals in the past and having them work for you, help you find a, a, a great deal is a really good way to increase the number of deals that you're able to see and analyze and offer on. And what you can do is tell them your criteria. Like I went three bed, two bath houses in this area of town in this price range, or I went anything that's two to four units in this price range that needs some work. And they'll, what they'll usually do is put you on an email drip so that every morning you'll get an email update with all the listings that hit the market that fit your criteria that you tell them. And that's going to ensure you see all the new listings coming out and can be the first to jump on it. Now, the problem with the MLS is that's where everyone looks. If you want to find off market deals, then you need to network with wholesalers who market for distressed houses. They get that house under contract and then sell the contract to the end buyer, who in this case would be you. Or you can take that whole process into your own hands of finding off market deals and you can pull lists for, uh, for your kind of property type from list source or prop stream. I'll put those links below as well as so you guys can check that out and play around with you know searching for properties that way. Or you can just simply drive for dollars and drive around your area looking for distressed houses. You know, a bad roof, overgrown grass, broken out windows. And then you write down the address, go home, look up their information on the county assessor's website, and then just simply write them a letter. I've gotten several deals this way and as a hungry new real estate investor it's a great way to find really good deals all right making your offers this is where the rubber meets the road and you take what's on that spreadsheet of yours after researching and analyzing the deals and turn that into reality and it's important to realize that over the last two years sellers have seen wild appreciation every pta meeting or soccer game or walking out of the park talked about how crazy the housing market was and sellers felt like they were you know sitting on gold with their house but over the last couple of months, the tables have really turned in your favor as the buyer. Like I talked about earlier, the houses are sitting on the market longer. So sellers feel that, you know, like they, it causes stress for them. Their house sit on the market for 30 days and then it gets to 60 days and that causes stress for them. And now prices have actually been coming down. Like that peak has passed and those who didn't already sell 
miss that train. So use that, make offers that are lower so that the, as the prices continue to fall, you don't lose equity or you don't get underwater. And it might take you 10 offers or more to get one under contract, but it's just all a numbers game. So don't get discouraged when your offers get rejected. Just take it one, uh, take it as being one no closer to a yes. And also don't fall in love with the house. Treat it unemotionally because it is an investment. And whatever you do, do not set the new comp in the neighborhood by overpaying. So basically put out the offers, do volume, and you will get good things back. And what if you don't have that much money to get started? There are loan programs uh, that you can get, which don't take a, a big down payment or down payment at all. Plus there's some other ways, some creative ways that we'll talk about. So the FHA loan, which is a government backed mortgage insured by the Federal Housing Administration, FHA, uh, that loan requires lower minimum credit scores and down payments than, than conventional, which are typically 20%, which makes them great for like the first time home buyer or for the investors trying to get in. And this one is three and a half percent down of the purchase price. And you can buy any residential property, which means one to four units. So you can get a small multifamily property and house act that. The downside, if there is one, is that it has to be your primary residence. So you have to live there for at least one year, which isn't a big deal because you could buy that house after a year, use the FHA loan again to buy the new house, rent this one out, or if you buy a small multifamily, you've already got the rental units. We've also got the VA loan, which is backed by the Veterans Administration, it allows active duty service members and veterans or eligible surviving spouses to finance a home with no down payment, so 0% down, no mortgage insurance, so no PMI, and pretty lenient credit requirements compared to other loans. And then there's the USDA loan, which is backed by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and helps low to moderate income buyers in rural areas, which is also 0% down. So all these require you to live in the house for at least a year, but are very great ways that if you can find a house that meets that criteria, if you are in a position to meet the criteria for that loan, to get in for a low down. So if those don't work for your situation, you can get creative. You can find a partner that has good credit or has the money for a down payment and you can do a conventional loan. And what I'd say about this is that to find that partner, 50% of a good deal is better than 100% of no deal. So the most important thing starting out uh, is to just get the deal, like get that momentum going. And if you're marketing for off-market deals or find a deal on the MLS with a seller who's willing to, you can do seller financing where the seller basically becomes the bank. And instead of getting a loan from a bank, the seller carries the loan and then you make payments to them. It's like pretty crazy, right? I bought a handful of properties this way and actually three of our five boutique hotels are seller finance. It's a great way to get in and not have to bring as much money to the deal. And it's all what you can negotiate. I mean, you can do a 0% down seller financing deal. You can also negotiate a lower interest rate. So it's definitely worth giving it a shot or looking for deals where that criteria would uh, work out. And something that can help make all this happen from finding a great deal to finding an investor friendly agent to connecting with partners is go to your local real estate investor meetup. And if there's not one in your area already, start one, like be that person who brings others together and is the center of those conversations. But either way, getting around the other real estate investors who are doing deals, who have experience is a great way to learn and have and to get access that you might not otherwise have. Like I found my first partners at a local real estate meetup. And when I got started, uh, and when I started hosting the, the largest real estate meetup in Panama City Beach, I got access to deals, I raised money from private investors, and was also able to help connect and do the same for other people. Real estate is a people business and your net worth really is your network. So get around the people that can help you get to where you're trying to go. So there you have it. Those are the things that'll help you get started investing in real estate and make 2023 your year. Like these are the things that I know work because I've done them. Like when you actually, uh, you know, pick your market, and like use that data to select the right market, like the stuff I shared in the description below, like you can really get insight to, you know, trends and markets that other people are missing and find one that really fits for you and be the person in that market. And then when you meet the right agent that starts sending you deals and when you start analyzing those deals and making offers, like it all contributes to your future success. And as far as like getting into it, I really like the analogy of like a funnel. So you think about like all your deals, all your leads, putting them in the, at the top end, then you need to analyze, then you need to screen, then you need to offer. So like the more you can put in the top end, the more you screen and go through, the more you offer on, the more you offer on, the more you get success on. So make this your year, do these things, like get involved in your local meetup. And if you guys have any questions, put them below. I'd love to be able to help you along your journey or try to you know make more videos that are kind of tailored to what you guys are looking for. So hope that helps and I'll see you on the next one.